Hi, it's Shannon and Caitlin from Homesteading in the Heartland. We're just out here in the garden. Logan's over there. If you, Logan, you want to wave? He's doing some weeding right now and being helpful. Kate, um, Caitlin's got to run to work, so we're going to do a quick garden update and give a, gar a small garden tour. It's not pretty. We just got back from our fishing trip. I started my tomato and pepper plants inside mid-April, second week of April, under the lights. And everything in this garden I started from seed except for one eggplant because I did not start eggplant with the tomatoes and peppers when you should have. So I'm going to go, go over here and then this first row, Logan is over here weeding in the first row. Here we have um, sweet banana peppers, these first three. Then I have serrano, jalapeno, Anaheim. Um, well, those two are jalapeno, excuse me. And we have Anaheim, 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 Serrano, and Anaheim. I got, I got them kind of mixed up when I was putting them in. Or I had actually had a couple peppers that didn't make it, and I transplanted some new peppers in as well, so that's why they're not perfectly in order. <clears throat> but so are these all the same? Yep. And then in the second row here, the last half. We have these are right here, our Golden California Wonder. You can see the pepper, big pepper down there. That'll turn yellow. And then up here, this front ones are all just regular California Wonder green peppers. They're looking great. We could have harvested them. I'm going to let them go a couple, a few more days. And then right here, we have our hot peppers now. We have cayenne pepper. And then we have three, three hallo, uh, habanero peppers. Um, it looks like we have two volunteer tomato plants that came up that I got to pull out that it were deceiving and didn't see it earlier. Then this is a Polish, this is an heirloom Zulu Polish purple pepper. And since I'm a Polak, I like growing it and it's fantastic. Here's another one, purple Zulu pe pepper. Half of this row of the peppers, I have a mix of Roma tomatoes and beefsteak. Roma and beefsteak and Roma. Let's come over here. Okay, and in, the ro in row four here, we have Manitoba. And down here, these are Manitoba. They ended up huge, this one. This is gonna weigh huge when it's grown. And a couple big ones over there. And they come down and then it's Roma tomatoes the rest of the way. I have a mix of regular, or this is a Manitoba. I, I have a mix of Regular Roma and Amish paste. And then this is a mortgage lifter. Looks like when we got a lot of rain, it kind of split a little bit there, but it's coming back. And we had one day or a lot, we had like two and a half inches of rain in one day. Just giving you a tour. Here's some more tomatoes. This is paste tomato. These are all paste? Yeah, they're all paste. They're a mix of that. These are all paste. And this over here, it, some of these plants are diseased. This, this one right here has blight, so I'm going to end up pulling it and today probably, and just take the tomatoes and have them ripen in a paper in a paper uh, cardboard box or paper bag. Um, what are all these? Then? That is going to be um, a ma mortgage lifter or Manitoba. Mm -hmm. and we got more paste, got more Roma paste tomatoes here. You see them all down there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then this. We didn't show down there. Nope. In the front of this row, we have cherry tomatoes. And then over here... Hold on, I'm going to show the cherry tomatoes quick. Look at all them bad boys. These are really good. These are some bigger ones. These are all cherry tomatoes. We tried to prune as best as we could, but... Uh, some just really yeah, want to keep growing. Are, yeah, these are all cherry tomatoes. So we have some blue cream, these are blue cream berries. And then we have Napa Chardonnay. So we're just doing this for the people locally that come to the markets. They can see what we're, we're growing their food here. If I bring any extra um, after canning and stuff. Ooh, yeah, those are blue cream berries and they're ready. Some of those are ready. This yum, one's yum. But split. It's split because we got a lot of water all at once. Mm -hmm. one day. Mm -mm. These are really good. tomato right here mm -hmm. and then um, and then um, I had to pull some other tomato plants that didn't do good and just put in some extra I had at the greenhouse so 
here's um, a mortgage lifter. And then this one is a Manitoba or a beefsteak. I don't remember. What are these ones over here? Because I it's changed since these ones I are made funky. the map. And those are these are heirloom Brad's atomic grape I got from Baker's Creek. And look, now that we've been gone at the lake, look, there's blight on this too. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to pull this one too. That's unfortunate. Okay. Heirlooms are more sensitive to. Yeah, heirlooms are much more sensitive to disease. Isn't it? This is a blank area. It had a, a, um, some self-seeded carrots we dug up and ate already. Um, it's too late to plant more carrots here. I can plant lettuce and radishes if I wanted to. We probably won't have time to though. But I probably <laughs> won't have time to with the way our life lives have been. And then here we have uh, Market Moore 76 cucumbers. Then we have Chicago pickling cucumbers there. Some peas and as well. It's a mix between Sugar Snap and Little Marvel because they got mixed up when we were saving seeds. The boys got them mixed up and it is what it is. No big deal. Um, here we have wax beans and uh, dragon tongue bush beans, purple pole beans at the end. And then this whole other row is Kentucky Wonder green beans. And then over here, oh. anyways, we have these some pots that tomato plants that didn't turn out so good. Um, hard when you, they need to stay watered pretty regularly. And the only plant that I did not grow from seed, it would be this egg plant, egg, beautiful yeah. eggplant that we're growing here. There's some peppers. extra peppers we have in pots. So. I thought about this last night. Maybe I sell a pepper plant at the next market because they're perennials and you can overwinter them and they grow like a tree. It's pretty cool. So these aren't doing so well. Oh, we got pump. We have a uh, squash over here or pumpkins. I can't remember over what we're there. Uh, and then the map for that one is on this side. So here we have um, pumpkin, the jack o' lantern pumpkins, and the mini pumpkins. And then here we ha have sugar baby pumpkins for pumpkin pie and for my homemade goat soap, my pumpkin spice goat soap. And then here we have butternut squash, acorn squash, zucchini, and yellow squash. So we'll have some stuff to bring to market that I don't get canned. So if anybody's coming to the market, this is where your food's coming from, fed with fish fertilizer. So just giving you a peek at the garden um, and it wouldn't be possible without my kids because having a disability makes things difficult. They've had to pick up the slack and do a lot of things that I can no longer do since neck surgery last year. So I'm thankful and grateful for them and so this concludes the garden tour. <laughs> As we tried to film this so many times that Caitlin just keeps laughing at me and we're just going to leave it and roll with it. Take a pan of the garden Caitlin. And I will try to get some <laughs> radishes planted as well for the market. Um, anyways, take care, have a good one, and God bless.